So another episode of MBRF podcast, and uh, now I have uh, a distinguished guest, Walter Pascarelli, um, who um, I'm happy to have for this very quick chat between a couple of friends. Walter, tell us, um, tell us a little bit about Walter. What are you doing here? What do you do in life? What do you like? What do you hate? Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Really great to be here at the Knowledge Summit. I, uh, I've enjoyed speaking with everyone and the caliber of conversation is generally exceptional. Um, well, my name is Walter Pascarelli. I've, uh, I've worked my whole life in, in AI strategy and policy. I have advised governments and heads of states, ministers on how they can prepare their countries for building the right kinds of capabilities in order to thrive in a future where AI will be the dominant force in economic and social development. Um, next to this, I am increasingly exploring the topic of what I call synthetic reality, which is basically outputs and content that looks hyper-realistic. For example, deep fakes take uh, AI-generated text, audio, video, music, that feels like we cannot distinguish what it is and what it isn't anymore. And I'm trying to understand precisely the socioeconomic implications this will have for understanding of reality. When, when you talk about those things, I can't help it but shiver a little bit. Honest to God, the, the second I hear things like deep fake or the fact that my voice can be um, immediately copied and used to sing a song or to say things that I've never said, Make me feel better a little bit, please. I mean, there's a few things to, to, to say. The, the first one is about mindset in general. I think everything that feels new in general is pretty scary. And if you think about it, when ChatGPT came out nearly three years ago, well, no, two years ago, everyone was like, oh, this is going to take all of our jobs. And now everyone is like, this thing is so slow. Why is it not fast, more faster, right? So I think there is an element of the trajectory and sort of like the wonder that we have about innovation that can feel scary, especially if it happens all at once and so fast. The other point to say is that there are a lot of measures being taken in order to tackle the threats that come from these technologies. For deepfakes or generated synthetic content, there's regulations that are coming up, there's technological tools that are being implemented to make sure that the boundary between real and, and uh, and, and non-authentic basically stays. Um, but perhaps as the hyper-realism grows, there is maybe also an adaptation of our mindset and our mentality that we need to have. And that is that what we consider to be authentic, I think is going to shift. I don't think the nature of an object, whether something is synthetic or not matters as much anymore as the quality of the experience that we get from it. If something, a video that is AI generated or an avatar that we speak to and feels real and feels good and makes us feel well, the trajectory I think at the moment hints that increasingly this is something that we still consider to be real irrespective of whether it's physical or not. That is a big change that I think feels very uncomfortable for a lot of people, but feels to me increasingly inevitable. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just observing it. From Walter's point of view. I think it's all about measurement, right? I mean, if you look at AI avatars that you can interact with um, and that can be used to, to communicate with, the one positive trait, or let's say, let's start with the negatives first. The negative one is that kind of people lose touch with ordinary people and like the relationships they develop with others become less important. The sense of presence in an organic world becomes less relevant. That's obviously the worst case scenario, right? But I think that's sort of a world in which people would be interacting more with these tools as with ordinary people. I think that would be very alarming. At the same time, these kinds of avatars that look and feel real can be used for people who feel socially isolated, or who have social anxieties, or who have medical issues, maybe elderly people who do not have much contact with others, to be a first step towards getting out into the world. They're not the solution, but they can be a means to support people in being reintegrated into society, as an example. Technology is there, the opportunity it creates is of course incredible, the responsible use of that is, is going to be dependent on humans. 
it's as you said a magnifying glass it's an amplifier of existing goodness or existing problems brilliant hey i look what would you give them as advice two do's and two don'ts when it comes to ai uh, i would say the first thing is an adaptiveness and a willingness to learn ai is going to happen whether we want it or not uh, technological development is not something that can be decelerated that can be stopped or should even be done because the innovations that we can create in healthcare and finance and social settings everywhere are vast and are important and matter and having that openness to be able to to adopt it and recognize it as such is i think one of the critical things that that we need to have so that's a matter of mindset the other thing is that you want to learn well how to use these tools it doesn't mean you need to become a coder it doesn't need to be become a programmer but it means that you spend sufficient time understanding exactly how they function what they can do their limitations and that will help you stay relevant in a job market you're never going to lose a job against an ai but you might lose it against someone using an ai and you stop fearing it and you stop fearing it walter thank you for uh, for being with us the rf podcast and we hope to see you. thank you for having me terry thank you thank you